G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for another trade update. I said I was going to be doing these videos more regularly uh, as the latter part of the season wears on. And of course, this time of year, there's heaps of new trade rumors and stuff swirling. So the point of this video is to kind of just capture what's being said out there at the moment and talk about some of the biggest stories bubbling away in the trade space. Trade content is amongst my favorite content to do. Um, I'm a big fan and it's going to be a potentially juicy one this year as well. We're still so much uncertainty to play out. We probably don't have the big named moving uh, like previous years but stuff we're going to talk about today is going to have a significant impact on uh, obviously some teams contending for the flag next year and at the other end of the ladder um, it's going to potentially have big implications on this year's draft as well. Now over the last couple of weeks I have referenced a goal for this channel to hit an average target of 50% of people who watch the channel regularly that are subscribed to the channel. So when I first mentioned this goal I think we were lingering around the 40% then it was 45 and now we're up to 47% of the people who watch my channel over the last 28 days have subscribed to the channel. So thank you so much for your support in this space. And if we could get it a little bit closer to 50, that is the new goal to aim for, that would be fantastic. It would help me in the algorithm, it would help me grow the channel, and it would be very, very much appreciated. Sweet, okay, so let's get into the trade content. And the first name I wanna talk about is North Melbourne's Ben Mackay, who is of course out of contract at the end of the year and will be a restricted free agent and is among one of the bigger names to potentially switch clubs at the end of this season. Now. It's interesting at this point of the year there's still two games to go but the language around Ben Mackay is that it's almost a foregone conclusion that he's going to be leaving North Melbourne and that's kind of unusual because the season hasn't actually ended yet but I'm referencing Brady Rawlings' comments uh, North Melbourne's list manager who says essentially that they're going to be matching an offer for Ben Mackay if it doesn't meet band one compensation. So band one compensation is when the club receives a pick immediately after its first round selection. So in this case, we're talking about what would currently be pick three for North Melbourne. So North Melbourne, just to clarify, has the choice of not matching the contract offer for Ben Mackay, thus for allowing them to receive potentially band one compensation, i.e. pick three, or alternatively, if they match the contract offer, this would force a trade. So where North Melbourne's thinking is, if Ben Mackay receives a contract large enough to generate rate pick three as compensation, North Melbourne would happily accept that. On the flip side, if it is band two compensation, which I believe is an end of first round pick, so we're talking pick 19, that's where North Melbourne would be more prepared to match a contract off for Ben Mackay and then force a trade with whichever club he ends up with. So the most likely team, or at least the most reported team is Essendon. So what they'd be angling for is Essendon's first round pick. So this puts Essendon, hypothetically Essendon, in an interesting situation. They could hypothetically offer, and I'm plucking these numbers arbitrarily, but let's say they offered $650,000 a year to Ben Mackay to join their footy club. If the AFL deemed this band two compensation, i.e. pick 19 for North Melbourne, North Melbourne would, in theory, match that contract offer and either keep Ben Mackay or force a trade for Essendon's first round pick. So if you're Essendon in this situation, they've got to weigh up two options of either paying Ben Mackay maybe $150,000 more than he's actually worth, but in that instance, not having to give up any draft collateral or alternatively pay him what they think he's worth arbitrarily $650,000 and force a trade. So saving $150,000 in salary cap or giving up a first round pick. Long story short, I think whichever club ends up with Ben Mackay is more likely to spend more in salary cap, particularly if you're Essendon who have a bit of a war chest at the moment, then give up a first round pick willingly. So long story short, I think regardless of where he goes, North Melbourne is likely to end up with picks two and three in the draft. And if West Coast somehow win a game before the end of the year and North Melbourne win the wooden spoon, I don't think that will happen. North Melbourne would, in theory, have picks one and two in the draft. Now, of course, Essendon has been reported as the most likely club to get Ben Mackay, but there has been some uh, developments outside of this deal. In particular, Harry Himmelberg has signed on with the GWS Giants for six years. He was another player that was touted to move clubs. Linked most closely with the Sydney Swans, another team who has, in theory, some Buddy Franklin money to spend on a free agent. So Sydney was allegedly going after Harry Himmelberg, and they failed in that pursuit because the Giants have locked him up for another six years. So the impact this will potentially have is that Sydney have missed out on what I presume is their primary target and in theory could turn their attention to Ben Mackay because we do know that they desperately need some key defenders. Now, Hilmenberg is kind of a forward and a defender, so I'm not really sure if they had him earmarked for defense or up front, but regardless, Sydney's backline issues for a team that is in theory in contention are pretty severe. So I would imagine they'd be crazy not to be at least poking their heads around in the Ben Mackay deal. So there's at least two clubs that I think are major contenders 
contenders for Ben Mackay's signature, and that would be Essendon and Sydney. Essendon is a common thread in this particular video. I want to talk a little bit about Darcy Parrish as well. It's a story I haven't really touched on much throughout my trade updates, but of course, he is a free agent and uh, was linked to potentially moving out of Essendon and uh, most likely to Geelong if it were to happen. But the latest fresh update is that it's being reported that Parrish is pretty keen to stay a bomber for life and uh, that the delay in securing his contract was more to do with some sort of niche CBA rules and negotiating contract deals for both Mason Redmond and Darcy Parrish, which is why they signed on so late. So I don't know how much there is to this particular story. It would be a devastating blow for the Dons if Parrish did leave, but it sounds like it's uh, increasingly unlikely to happen. Another bomber boy, Brennan Zirk Thatcher, is a player that's uh, kind of broken out this season and become a lock key down defender for Essendon and out of contract at the end of the year. Again, I don't know if this CBA related or not, but regardless, he's attracting some interest as a lot of key position defenders do, especially if they're half decent. And Zerk Thatcher is reportedly linked to uh, someone like Port Adelaide in particular, which I found interesting. I don't really have any indication of whether Zerk Thatcher is more likely to stay or go. Hasn't really been reported on that heavily, but what I will say is that uh, Essendon really want to avoid an outcome here where they potentially miss out on Ben Mackay and they lose Zerk Thatcher because then they will have their own defensive issues. Talked about Matt Crouch a little bit on this channel this year because it's been kind of an intriguing story what with Adelaide reportedly telling him that he wasn't going to be offered a contract past this year but in recent times he's broken back into that Adelaide midfield and he's put in some close to best on ground performances which might have bought him a lifeline. Now again I'm not really sure if there is really a market for a 28 to turning 29 year old inside mid next year but at the very least I think his recent form in that Adelaide midfield might have at least bought him a one year deal to stay at the Crows. Speaking of the Crows, Tom Doday is another player that has been linked to a potential move this year as a restricted free agent. He's obviously a tallish kind of intercepting defender. With Adelaide's tall defensive options uh, being so depleted, he's not really a player they want to let go of. But the complication for Tom Doday here is that he's done two ACLs. He's recently had surgery on both his ACL and his foot. So that's a horrible time in terms of contract negotiations to have just done an ACL. It's reported that uh, you know, he was linked to Brisbane. There's, of course, going to be a Sydney connection because the fact that he's a taller defender. But what he apparently wants is some job security, and he may not be getting a particularly large deal with the Adelaide Crows considering his injury history, and that kind of makes sense. It's a brave move for any club to really take a punt on recruiting Tom Doday right now. And another team like Sydney that I just mentioned, Doday's going to miss a large chunk of next year. So I think in terms of their needs, they need to replace someone in their defense pretty much ASAP. So I'm not really sure a deal for a trade really gets done here or free agency rather. Most likely the scenario here is Tom Doday signs another two-year deal at the Crows and tries to improve his contract value by the next time that contract rolls around. Another potential interesting thread is that of Nick Haynes at the GWS Giants, who uh, has historically been a very, very good defender for that club, but got a heavily backhanded contract, which means that uh, reportedly over the next year, he's going to be paid more than $1.2 million. So there's a bit of a suggestion that Nick Haynes could move clubs as part of a salary dump, allowing GWS to free up a little bit more cash. We do know that they're needs are probably some outside run and carry. It'd be an interesting development here because Nick Haynes, uh, I think was an inaugural GWS giant, been a gun player for a long time, but may find himself at a new club by the end of this year. We'll see what happens. There's a few other decent players potentially on the move this off season. One of them is Jack Silvani, who's found himself a little bit out of favor at the Blues this year and reportedly not going to be offered a new contract at that club. So he's one player that could potentially move on the cheap. Jack Billings is another one who is apparently going to be on about 500000 dollars a year next season and potentially might be looking at some more regular senior opportunities. I know it's a little bit cliche to pick one of the worst teams in the comp, but honestly, if I'm North Melbourne, I'd be looking with interest at guys like Jack Billings and Jack Silvani to improve their depth because it's about time that North Melbourne really started to move up the ladder. And what I mean by that is they're not a team that is at the start of a rebuild who need to focus on getting 18 rolls into their list. They're going to have pick two and three this year, most likely. They added Sheasel and Wardle last year. Some experienced, mature depth to help North Melbourne is probably exactly what they need right now. And it'd be interesting to see if the Alistair Clarkson lure will help get them a few more mature players in the same sort of vein that they got Logan Tucker last year. But I think Silvani and Billings could potentially be a better pair. And finally, it's probably just worth mentioning that the Tom Barras to Sydney deal seems to have halted in its tracks with uh, Tom Barras reportedly, according to Tim Gossage, telling the Eagles he's going nowhere. So 
So the big implication of this is just simply that Sydney will have to keep looking for their key defensive saviour, I suppose. It's not going to be Tom Barras. Does that accelerate their interest in perhaps a Ben Mackay or a Brendan Zerk Thatcher, even a Sava Radigalia at this point? We'll see. But Sydney's quest for a tall defender is one of the more intriguing uh, storylines of this trade period, in my opinion. So as always, guys, I welcome your thoughts and comments in the comments section below. What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? What are some players that I potentially missed? There's obviously a lot of stories bubbling away at the moment. Um, but if there's a story that you're particularly interested in, it's one that I can talk about in future videos. Really appreciate all the support lately. We're building to a very exciting end of the 2023 season and what should be a very, very good final series as well. So if you're new to the channel, thank you for subscribing. If you've been around for a while, thank you even more. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.